Hey everyone, it is October 20th, 2023. Um, so I kind of had a very chill day today. Um, a very chill Friday here at home. Um, I was going to go see the 30th anniversary 3D version of Not Remember for Christmas, but I decided at the last minute to just stay home. Um, and my friend and roommate was like, we should, you should hang out here and watch movies and have wine. I was like, all right, but if I'm going to watch movies, we got to watch horror movies because it's a week away from Halloween. And so he's like, all right, cool. Which is fine because there's a lot of Christmas movies he's, he likes. And at Christmas, I watch all the Christmas movies. But tonight we ended up watching, uh, we started off with this documentary, which we only watched like maybe 40 minutes of it, but it was called Wiggles the Clown. Wiggles the Clown. Anyways, it was a documentary. I apologize if that's the wrong one. But then after that, we ended up putting on, um, because we were watching Clowns, I was like, bro, you, he's never seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And I was like, we got to watch Killer Clowns from Outer Space because I grew up on that movie. My sister and I watched that movie all the time. And I loved it. And I, it's very, very campy. It's very, very 80s. But I love the movie. And I thought it was silly. And it's directed by one of the Chiodo brothers and their puppeteers. And I have met the Chiodo brothers many times. I've been to their studios. And I thought, we got to watch this movie. It sounds fun. It'll be great. He never seen it, so we ended up watching it. And it's like very campy, very 80s, but it was a lot of fun. And then I mentioned this movie that I love, 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 love called Trick or Treat. And I have the little doll. Hold on. I have a little doll here. Trick or Treat. It's one of my favorite movies. I. Hold on. I'm going to watch it right now. Ah! Hold on. <laughs> I have the door. I love Trick or Treat. It's such a good film. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies. And my and my friend hadn't seen it yet. And I was like, oh, dude, we got to watch Trick or Treat. And it's great because it's kind of a cool anthology. And I went to the screening of it. I never heard of this movie. And I went to a screening of it like years ago. And I, I loved it when I saw it in the theater. And I've been obsessed with it ever since then. And I watch it every Halloween. So I was like, we got to watch Trick or Treat. I think he said it was on Paramount Plus, so we ended up watching it, and I loved it. And he thought it was really good, too. And then it actually starred one of my favorite actors, Dylan Baker. And I was like, oh, my God, if we're going to watch this movie with Dylan Baker, you got to watch Fido, which has Dylan Baker, which he's in a bigger role in Fido. And I was like, Fido's a great movie because it deals with zombies. And it's one of my favorite zombie movies, and a lot of people don't know about it. And if you look at the movie and you see like the poster art it looks like a very like low budget movie but it's done very well i want to say it's done by lionsgate but anyways it's such a well done movie it stars carrie ann moss from the matrix it has uh dylan baker and other people but it, it it's such a fun zombie film if it takes place in the 50s I was like, bro, we gotta watch this movie. So, anyways, we watched that movie. So, so I hung out with my friend tonight. I had a few glasses of wine. We ended up watching like three horror movies back to back, which I was not expecting. I was still watching my uh, series that I've been watching, um, The Terror, but it was nice to, to just like chill and actually watch horror movies tonight, which is great because like Halloween is like a week and a half away, and I'm supposed to be going out of town next weekend for this. Horror Film Festival, which sadly I just found out it's being canceled, which is frustrating because I have two, I have two scripts that were up for awards at this film festival. I don't know what that means. I don't know if we're going to get awards now. I don't know. They they had to cancel for some personal reasons, which I don't know. I hope everything's okay. Um, the two people that run this festival, Mike and Joanne, are friends of mine, and I really, really hope that everything's okay. I haven't heard what's going on, but I just know that the film. Film festival is canceled. So my prayers go out to Mike and Joanne, who run the festival. This was supposed to be their last year. And now they're not doing it. And I hope all the best for them. But I also had two films that were up against each other. I don't know what's going to happen now. I have to hear about that. But I had to cancel everything. So um, I guess I'm available next weekend. So I'm going to make plans. But... um. 
we we hope everything's good with them, with Mike Joanne. And um, it was nice to be able to have today off and actually just sit and watch horror movies. I know it sounds so dumb. But, you know, it's like, I look at it like this. When, when Christmas comes, a lot of people watch Christmas movies. You always watch, like, Miracle on 34th Street or you watch It's a Wonderful Life or A Christmas Carol or... Um, a Christmas story, which is about the kid. That, oh shit! Which is the story of you know Frankie or Al, Ralphie who wants you know to get the, the the BB gun with his mom, which is such a great movie, and they made a sequel to it, which is even just as good. But you know, there's like certain movies that you 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 sort of watch during Christmas that denotes what Christmas is to you, and there are a few movies that I watch. Well, I also so during Christmas I watch. Christmas movies, but I also watch Anna and the Apocalypse, which is which is a great Christmas horror mu- movie musical. But I also watch a lot of movies during the horror season, and Trick or Treat is one of them, and Fido was one of them, and there's a few. And I'm grateful that my friend wanted to watch them with me today. So um, I feel like I had a good day. You know, if I'm gonna stay home, I might as well do what I want. So I was able to watch those today. And uh, a few of my paychecks come in from other jobs. So today has been very productive. And it was very quiet and very chill, which I like. Um, the, the film industry is strange. So um, I'm usually very, very busy, usually during October. And like right up to Thanksgiving. Because a lot of production companies want to film right up to the holidays. Because they know that the holidays slow down. So like... You film it. You film it to Thanksgiving, and then, sorry, and then right after Thanksgiving, you film up to like Christmas, and then after that, you know, you don't film again until January. But with the writer strike, and the actor strike coming off of like the act, coming off of the writer strike, and then still dealing with the actor strike, there is a lot of things that are still sort of slow to rebuild. And I respect that because, you know, a lot of projects aren't really filming unless they have the interim agreement with SAG, which is important because you don't want, you know, you don't want to cross the writer strike. You don't want to cross the line. But um, it's just interesting to go into the holiday season with being the, with the writer strike because and the actor strike because it's been going on for so long. And you're just like, how does this industry go this long without making any projects? And I don't know. I just don't have an answer because they're still they're still dealing with all that stuff. And um, they're still dealing with all that stuff. And we, there's no end in sight. You know, there just isn't an end in sight where, you know... I got to take these off where people are still dealing with the writer strike, which is we just came off of the writer strike. And so like that slow to, to come off. But then we're also still dealing with the right with the actor strike, which is keeping us from filming a lot, especially within like television. So um, when I dealt with the with the with the actors, I mean, the writers slash actor strike back in 2018. No. I apologize, 2008, it wasn't this bad. They came to an agreement. We were down for a few months. We came to an agreement. Everything was fine. But this one, this one's going to go for a while. And this one's going through the holidays. And now that we're coming, so we're almost to Halloween, which means we're going to hit November. And in November, you only have a couple of weeks and then you're down for Thanksgiving. And then you after that, you only film for a couple of weeks and then we're down for the Christmas. So... I mean, the chances of us filming this year are very, very, very slim when it comes to television. And that's scary because, like, there are so many of us, both crew and actors and writers, that need work. And they just cannot come to agreement. And I'm telling you, I actually thought that they would come to agreement and they didn't. And that scares me because this is probably the longest we've gone without working. 
which means these studios are not making as much money. They're just not making money. And, like, it's crazy because I feel like Netflix is probably the one that's holding out the longest. And that's maddening to me because, like, how can they be a streaming service and not have... Like, they have content that they already have scheduled, but they have nothing new. So once everybody's seen that stuff, there's literally nothing new. And now that we're going to the holidays, nothing's going to start moving forward until probably January, in the middle of January... Which means we probably won't getting into we probably won't get into actual filmmaking until February, which means we won't have any new content until probably March. So here we are, halfway through October, almost to November. And it's a huge possibility that we won't have any new content until March. That's insane to me. And yet these studios are like, nah, we don't want our crew members to have money because we make billions. That is, like, maddening to me. Maddening. Maddening to me. That, like, they just don't care. But let's look at it like this. It's not that they just don't care about crew members, because they don't, clearly. Because they don't want to be. But they also don't care about their audience, which means they're not making anything new. Which means all of the shows that we watched over the last couple of years. Like, I have shows that I love watching. Shit, I'm sorry, I keep dropping this. I have shows that I love watching over the last couple of years that just aren't filming. Like, they're just not filming at all. That's crazy to me. And so, like, I get it. Like, Disney Plus has, like, the second season of Loki. Okay, whatever. And, like, Netflix has a few shows that they've already pushed out. Okay, that's fine. But they're not making anything new. Right, so once all of this stuff that they've had is out there, that's all they have. They don't have anything else. And so, you know, in the next five or six months, we're not gonna have any new con you're not gonna have new content. And I made this prediction, and you can I could be wrong, and I won't it now, but I think the Oscars not in 2024, clearly, because we've had a lot of filming this year early. But I'm looking at the Oscars in 2025. So the Oscars are usually in February. Which means next year, early next year, there's still going to be some films that came out like Barbie. Up and, right? Okay. But let's look at the future. Let's look at the Oscars of 2025. So the major, the half of the year of 2023 and half of the year in 2024, no new content is being made. Right? Like... With big with big studios. But what's being made is all of the independent films. So I feel like in the Oscars of 2025, a lot of the things that we see that are for Oscars are going to be independent films. That's only because a lot of big films aren't being made yet. Now, they might be made in the second half of 2024. But it's still going to take a while for those things to get off. Which means... We're we're getting a lot of independent films that are that are coming out in theaters and on streaming at the second half of twenty twenty four and the first half of twenty twenty five. So, looking at Oscar season, I feel like the Oscars in twenty twenty five February twenty twenty five are going to be independent films, which is awesome. Which because it, it's, okay, looks look let's look at the thing that happened with Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift was like, all right, well, I can do my concert and I could go through these big producers, but they're on strike right now. So I'm just going to make a deal with like AMC. So Taylor Swift goes and makes makes a deal with AMC and she literally cuts out all the, the big studios and she makes millions. And I mean, she makes millions her, her opening weekend. So much so that a lot of the movies that were supposed to open that weekend got pushed. And rightly so. And she makes millions but she doesn't show that any big studios she gets a cut of it the theaters get a cut of it right and that's that's it like she pretty much just that's a huge thing like she found a way to get through the studios because the studios are on strike right now she can't work with them but her concert is a huge deal and so looking at that there might be a lot of big stars at the in the beginning of 2024 that may be like well 
it worked for Taylor Swift. Like, let's see what I can do. So a lot of the big studios are sort of getting bypassed. But because they don't want to make a deal, because they want to be so selfish in how they deal with with actors and writers and crew, people are finding creative ways to walk around that. Because they're like, look, we still want to make movies. We still want to make content. But you guys want to sit with your thumbs up your ass because, you know, like people like Netflix don't want to give up the numbers for streaming. Which is keeping people from understanding, like, okay, so, like, let's say Netflix has a show that has, like, 5 million viewers. They don't want to tell people it has 5 million viewers, so they don't want to pay the residuals for that. Which is literally asinine, because that's what television has done, and that's what cable has done. Like, that's what we've done in the industry for years. And Netflix, and I only use Netflix because I know Netflix is one of the one of the few companies that's holding out. Netflix is like, nah, we're good. We're just going to keep going. But eventually, Netflix is going to run out of new content. And then we're all going to be stuck with, like, the same content and all the streaming services. So, you know, but, like, A24 has made a deal with, like, SAG where they're like, okay, well, it doesn't matter what the contract is. We'll honor it. We just want to make movies. And so, like, A24 is one of the few theaters that's out there making content during the strike, which is so smart. So it doesn't matter what, like... SAG decides to to do during the strike, A24 is like, yeah, 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 we'll honor it. Let's just, we want to make content. And so like why all the other big studios aren't making content and television isn't making content, A24 is out there making content. That That's huge. And independent films are making content, which of course is huge. And so I see this as sort of like, oh, an interesting sort of renaissance period where people who want to make content are making content. And that's huge. And because you have people like Taylor Swift that are like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to deal with these big studios because, you know, they're striking right now, but I have something that needs to be out there. And they go out there and they make these deals with AMC. And AMC me millions of dollars. Do not tell me that that's not going to happen again. And so why studios are sitting there wanting to be greedy, people are finding other ways to make money and just leaving the studios behind. So studios are shooting themselves on the foot. And rightly so. They made billions during the pandemic. Billions during the pandemic. And they don't want to share it with anybody. And everybody else is like, fine. Keep your fucking money. We'll find other ways to do what we want to do. Because you can't hold us back. And what's happening is like, people are still making content. They're just doing a lot of the big studios. So I am not surprised that this particular strike is going on as long. And I'm not surprised that it's going to literally redefine the film industry, which needs to happen. So I'm behind it. I'm an independent filmmaker, and I would love to be a part of what's happening right now. This is a huge renaissance, and we are witnessing it. Yes, it's very terrifying. It's very scary. We are in uncharted territories when it comes to filmmaking right now. But we are all in this together, and we're navigating it, and we're figuring it out together. And all I can say is, is as terrifying as it is, it's also very exciting and overwhelming and, you know, exhilarating. So let's hang on. Let's see where it goes. Let's hope that all this ends soon and that studios can come to an agreement. If they don't soon, that's fine because, as you can see, we're still making content and we're still going to find ways to get it out there. And studios can either agree to jump on this bandwagon or they can be left behind. In which case, because they, because here's the thing, they want to keep raising their prices so much. Like Netflix and Disney keep raising their prices constantly. But they're not offering anything new. But then you have places like Barbie, the Barbie movie made so much money. Oppenheimer made so much money. But also Taylor Swift's movie, her live concert, made so much money for the theaters and the studios weren't even, even involved so it'll be interesting to see how the end of 2023 into 2024 the film industry, industry changes let's just hope that i understand it enough to be able to change with it so anyways happy friday hope everybody had a good friday i hope you are all ready for the weekend it's very chill today it's been a hot, 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 hot day. I've been inside all day, just staying in the cool weather. But it's supposed to finally cool down. 
And I think this weekend I'm going to finally go out and see movies. But it was nice to relax today and see movies at home. So I have been enjoying this holiday spooky season. I hope you have, you have as well. And uh, have a happy Friday, everybody. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.